You've seen those chic, upright city bikes riding through the canals of Amsterdam. In North America, you might have seen them walking around town. The iconic touch bike is the epitome of functional cycling, and it's even becoming popular outside of its own country. But how excellent are Dutch bicycles? For realistic cycling at slow to moderate speeds, including such things as commuting, running errands, making deliveries, and other forms of personal transportation, Dutch bikes are excellent. The bikes themselves tend to be very low maintenance and sturdy under big loads, and their upright stance is comfortable. Similar bikes are widely available everywhere, from England to China, or at least they were until cars became more reasonably priced. Before we start, if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please do subscribe. If you liked the video, please press the thumbs up button and also click the bell icon. In the Netherlands, bicycles are regarded as a mode of transportation for daily travel as a rapid and effective means of moving from point A to point B. Bicycles are mostly employed for recreation and exercise in other nations. Nearly all the unique qualities of a bicycle like this are explained by this one distinction. Of course, this is not the only type of bicycle you'll see in the Netherlands. There are others such as e-bikes, cargo bikes, hand cycles, and road bikes, which are undoubtedly utilized for sports, particularly on weekends. However, this type of bike is perhaps the most popular for commuting within cities. What therefore distinguishes this bicycle from others that you may be familiar with? The main distinction is that its bicycle is upright. It is designed to be ridden when the rider is seated upright. This is an effective position that will allow the crank to receive the most power possible during a pedal stroke. It also is not all arrow. Who cares? Comfort is what an upright position does offer. The bicycle has high, swept-back handlebars that are incredibly comfortable to ride. Instead of exerting a weight on the handlebars of this type of bicycle, you nearly pull them up and back. Simply put, this is a much comfortable way to ride a bike. Additionally, the style is strikingly similar to the first safety bicycle, which was created in the United Kingdom in the late 19th century. Additionally, sitting upright makes it simpler to see what is going all around you, which can also make cycling in crowded urban areas with many other people safer. You can dress however you choose while riding in this manner, because it is identical to sitting on the couch. Because of this, the bulk of the population in the Netherlands prepares for the destination rather than the journey. This bike features a step-through frame, so getting on and off is really simple and doesn't require you to swing your legs around just like you would on a crossbar-equipped bike. Although these frames are acceptable and you will undoubtedly see them here, I find them especially bothersome if you have a child seat because even if you swing your leg up and get on, you will kick your child in the head. And I don't understand why we continue to refer to these as men's bikes, when they are the only ones that allow you to hit your nuts. Step-through frames are becoming more and more popular among both men and women because they're more convenient to use. This is another reason why individuals cycle while wearing regular clothing and why you'll even see ladies cycling while sporting dresses and skirts. Speaking of skirts, Dutch bicycles frequently have this accessory known as a skirt guard or coast guard. It keeps lengthy garment items from getting caught in the spokes while you're riding. Additionally, it lessens the chance that a youngster seated in the back will snag their foot. The chain guard, a plastic or metal covering over the bicycle chain, is another item to safeguard your clothing. Additionally, it aids in shielding the chain from the environment, extending the lifespan. The brakes and drivetrain are every bicycle's weakest points. They demand the most regular upkeep and are most vulnerable to bad weather. Furthermore, the Dutch seasons are not particularly attractive. Although it's not quite Siberia, storing bicycle outside in the northern and central regions of Europe calls for substantial durability. Dutch bikes frequently utilize internally geared hubs and drum or roller brakes to address both weather and maintenance issues simultaneously. Derailleur gears are commonplace among us. That device, which is spring-loaded, raises and lowers the chain to change gears. Although it's an elegant and easy method of shifting, it requires frequent adjustment and is susceptible to bumps and bruises while moving around town. Dutch bicycles utilize a unique rear hub with numerous tiny gears inside it to address this issue. The best ones provide as much range as a derailleur, but they do so in a waterproof package that rarely needs maintenance. Brakes also follow a similar pattern of events. For the majority of urban riding, rim brakes are adequate, while disc brakes have tons of power. However, each requires a little bit of fine-tuning. Fortunately, brakes can be installed inside a hub just like gears can. A roller brake is the variation used by the majority of Dutch bicycles. Consider highly developed coaster brakes similar to those you might have used as a child. Even if you overlook it slightly, it functions the same whether wet or dry. It also has a feature called a frame lock and almost every bicycle has one. For a variety of reasons, 
These are really useful, but I've only ever really encountered them in the Netherlands, Denmark and Japan. They make stopping at a store while biking extremely convenient because they make it simple to lock the back wheel of your bicycle for brief stops. Your key is also kept inside the frame lock for your riding. Although there are frame locks available that don't do this, I prefer the key retaining feature. This minor feature makes sure that you always have access to your bike keys. Additionally, even though the locking mechanism has a lot of room in the wheel, I end up hitting a spoke far more frequently than you'd imagine. I ought to have studied neutrino physics. The bicycle cannot be ridden whenever this lock is in place, and you can just pick this up and leave it with it. It is also better to bring a chain lock with you as well, something that most people do. If you want to make absolutely sure that your bicycle is still there when you return, if you only see bikes locked in this manner, the owner probably thinks the bike is too subpar to be stolen. A frame lock with just a chain lock built in offers two locks with a single key, which is a small variant in the previous statement. It's interesting to note that U-locks, by far the most popular locks in North America, are not frequently seen there. Most likely because there's so many other bikes nearby that it's challenging to get close enough to something that might lock to it. Don't you want to know how it feels to ride on one of the Dutch bikes? You stand tall and with dignity, and you don't like to move quickly. Without lowering the saddle too low, you can even place a minimum of one foot on the ground. The steering's seeming lightness is one peculiarity. It's hard to describe, but it feels more like you're following a front wheel than riding on the upper edge of it. When you give it some thought, it makes sense because the layout places you far behind the rear wheel. A significant contributing factor are the fat tires or springy saddle. Additionally, the handlebars' swept-back design allows them to slightly flex, which helps soften rough terrain. In Roux, gaining a few pounds can cause your uphill speed to drop by about 10%, and it takes more effort to begin from a complete stop. However, their upright stance is what slows them down the most when going uphill. You can cycle while using your glutes if you lean forward. Sitting up straight requires fewer of them. The glutes are large muscles, therefore, less use results in significantly less power. Dutch bikes are ideal for the right kind of rider. They're definitely a good fit if you consider yourself more of a someone who happens to go by bicycle rather than a cyclist. In the Netherlands, the two ideas are so dissimilar that they have their own independent words. A wheel runner is a racing or sport cyclist, whereas a Fitzer is a utility cyclist. Dutch bikes are designed from the ground up for practical city riding. That means durable components, bulky, very practical attachments, and an incredibly pleasant riding position. All of those factors combine to create a bike that's as reliable and accessible as a good automobile. The key to relaxation on a bike is to sit up straight. On a bike, leaning forward primarily determines speed. The essential trade-off is between riding harder or easier, and you may select which. Furthermore, Dutch motorcycles are overwhelmingly on the side of comfort. That's a fantastic thing, to return to bikes as the main mode of mobility. A bike is only useful if you can really ride it comfortably and in normal clothing. These are the things about Dutch bikes. Do you think it's good? Let's know your thoughts in the comment section below. And also, don't forget to subscribe as well as like this video.